Hello and welcome to the back nine of the Music City Open, sponsored by Dynamic Disc. We're at Cedar Hill DGC with a great feature card. And uh, we're here on round one. We've got Jacob Henson, Chris Hassan, Chris Dickerson, and Jeremy Jones. And uh, yeah, this is round one of the Music City Open, guys. Yeah, so Jacob and Chris are bigger pros on the card. They're putting together great rounds. And Chris and Jeremy, they're hanging in there. Maybe a little bit disappointing start, but uh, they'll pick it up on the back nine, hopefully. And this is a great hole to start on for this video. This was aced last year in the Music City Open by Corey Ellis out of West Virginia. Wow. Dickerson sliding right up the gap where you want to be. Yeah, there's definitely, it's tough to get this low ceiling drive so far. And with this tight gap, there's not a lot of room to flex the disc. You really just got to have it on a straight line. And, you know, that, that can be tough to get that distance to keep it on hyzer for 416 feet. Absolutely. And those are a couple great drives. People forget this is a double mando right off the tee. Yeah. Drop zone plays on the line between the two guardian trees there. And Chris just got the best skip of his life. Yep. It's right at the double mando. And He's in there. Yeah, he skipped. Probably over 200 feet. Also another great drive. A little bit to the right. Yep. This is this is really a this is really a hole that separates the bigger pros and the locals. If if you've got a big arm and you can throw these shots, then you're looking to get it. But a lot of some of these guys that aren't playing the big tournaments every weekend, this is a tough hole. Absolutely. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's a straight shot down the gap, but there's a bunch of trees right there at the pinch point leading up to the basket. Jacob, I believe, is still yet to putt for his birdie. Very impressive to get within this distance. Yeah, that's a great yeah, two. Yeah, that's a great two to get. You need that one. And Chris, maybe a little disappointed after hitting the very top of the cage on his little step putt. But uh, one, two, and three threes. And he comes by it on us. Obviously disappointed, but he's a gentleman. Yep. Dickerson cleaning up. Moving on. And hole 11, we typically don't play from this tee pad to the basket that we're playing to. So this is hole 10 for the tournament, and this is hole 12? Normal? No, yeah, hole 9. Hole, hole 9, yeah. Sorry, cleaning that up. It's confusing for us, guys. And Jacob's taking this little secret gap. Yeah, that's pretty much a local route. Um, playing from this alternate pin off to the right makes this hole challenging for just about everybody. There's a really awkward dog leg to the right right off the tee, but then the hole kind of hyzers out from there down the fairway to the long pin. And I don't think anybody can look at this tee pad and, and think of really any one definitive right way to attack it on the tee pad. I feel like Chris had a great line going, throwing something very close to that tree on the right with something stable and flexing it over and having it flex out at the end and getting a little bit of a skip, I feel like that's the best line to get to the And basket. you see how it paid off. I mean, it's further up, you know, it's yeah. right there, yep. looking at a nice, easy hyzer approach. And forehand around is a nice, safe play. Um... Jeremy went with the left-handed forehand flex shot. Interesting to see. Yep. And then Jacob, he's going to be up there. That's that's a Also another nice good drive. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those guys landed in the right spot. Yeah, and Chris, this is just hopefully put it up by the basket, then tap it in, maybe give it a little bit of a floaty run. But then it looks like he's in perfectly good strike zone. Jeremy... And that's a very unfortunate chain out. Yeah, surprising miss there from Jeremy. Chris should be able to put this one in. Wow, oh, the he cage. misses that. That's Chris, a little surprising. Dude, did you learn from your dad or did you learn from me? And then Jacob. Okay, Man, he corrects off the Goodbye. two other guys. He's going to put it in. And that looks nice. Everyone all landing about the same distance for their three putts. Chris and puts it right a, in the middle. That's a that's an easy putt for Chris. Yep. But looking good right now. I mean, that is um, uh, more challenging than you would expect, kind of hole, just because of the entrance off the tee pad. But yeah, for sure. Hole ten. 
And this is where we had all our backups at uh, Music City Open 2017 because we started on hole 10. And it's not forgiving on the right or left side. There is a lot of thick stuff that you can get caught up in. And it's not short. This might be one of the toughest holes to par on the whole course because it's 521 foot through a tight gap, par 3. But Jacob, he's going to be pin high, almost hitting the Almost Tank hitting Gallery. Ken Folger. Ken Folger has been in the, pan, in the line of fire multiple times this weekend. And we are playing to the Memorial Bend Northcut basket, which so it's kind of appropriate. For those that don't know, Ken Folger and Ben Northcutt are uh, Nashville Disc Golf Pioneers. And Chris, both of them, they're both going to be throwing low shots. In the house. Getting right in the middle. Just easy up shot range. It's more of a forehand favorable shot because there's a big tree on the right that creates a low ceiling. And Jeremy's going to hang out. That's a great shot. Just to put it in the middle, that's all you want. On that is hole. a great shot. This is a really interesting hole because the foundations, as you saw, there are the foundations of a house in the middle of the fairway that uh, apparently used to be there at some point. I'm uh, new to the scene, so I wasn't here for that. But And Chris goes a little bit long. This is a scary basket to put on being elevated. And the, the logs in front of the basket. I mean, these guys are all putting respectable efforts in on this hole. And Jeremy's going for the longest jump putt in history. And but, it was a great line. Yeah, I mean, he's right puts there. Puts it right next to it. Yeah. It's a lot of power to get it up there. Jacob playing smart. Doesn't want to run at it and go 30 feet past. Yeah, and he's inside. He's inside that barrier. Great putt from yeah. Chris's song. That's a way to make up for those last couple, yeah, buddy. Yep, that's a good par to get. Par feels like a half a birdie on this hole. Not really a true par four, but... It is. It's true. It's a solid uh, three to yeah. get. Yep, and everyone's just going to be tapping in on this beautiful hole. I always have fun watching people try to get their discs out of this basket because everybody has a different approach to getting their discs out of an elevated basket. And sometimes it looks kind of funny. I don't ever make fun of them, but I remember it and I chuckle to myself. All right, moving on. <laughs> hole 13, we went from, I believe, the third longest hole to the shortest hole. It's a popular play here. It's a flex forehand. It's, there's a little bit more room on the left. And it's definitely not as easy as it looks, as Jacob points out right there. There's a lot of tricky trees out here. Yep. And Chris, looking to correct off Jacob's line. Man, of course. Boom! Look at that. Look at that landing. Perfect there. speed control. Puts it right by the basket. Didn't throw it too hard. Made sure he got it there. And with the uphill slope, you're not getting a lot of skip either. Chris letting it go a little early there. But he got a great and skip look at that. again. Yeah, he's not in bad positioning. And Jeremy, he's going to go with a backhand hyzer. A little yeah, bit left side. A little left, a little short. Yeah. Looks like he's giving this a run. Pretty yeah, aggressive he stance. definitely yeah, was he, getting after very it. Very close. Jacob, after hitting that unfortunate tree, oh, oh spit through. Ah, on the top. Oh man, side I wanted that to go in so bad. Chris looks like he's from Circles Edge. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, boy. Hey, man, he's one of our local favorites. We love that guy. Always good to see him putt well. Jacob, a little disappointing tap oh, in. Yeah. A lot of golf left. Jeremy, he's going to put it in. Snap, and Chris, bang. easy birdie. And guys, you are seeing these scores separate in Cedar Hill. I mean, obviously, the, you know, the, the people that can throw 500 feet accurately and hit certain angles... Just really separating themselves from the field here. And speaking of certain angles, hole 14. Just super tight gap that finishes to the left. A very specific this, niche. This may be shot. the most technical hole at Cedar Hill. It's not the longest. It's not the most challenging. But, man, there is one perfect line. And it's an uphill low ceiling. 372 feet. Everyone's throwing their max distance drivers as hard as they can to get up this hill. 
And usually to. something a little flippy because there is some turn before you get up to the landing zone. And yeah, Jacob but dang! threw an insane shot. That's a great shot He's with his parked. 400 G D1. What a great shot from Jacob. Jeremy yeah. just turns around. He doesn't even care. <laughs> he was like, I'm there somewhere. I'm up the field. Man, he got lucky with his gap over here. You can really get pinched off over there if you're on that side. And look at, see, that's how the trees at Cedar Hill are, man. Yeah. You had a great throw, and then all of a sudden just get knocked backwards. And that's a solid approach. If he's got the D on yeah. it, yeah, that looks like it's part. Yep. Chris, maybe a little set putt. Let's see. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, off, off the cage. Off the cage. Let's see if that will affect the rest of his round, having two two already on the back nine. Step Man, that Jeremy that Jones, what a great putt. Yep. Shakes it off from a few holes ago, missing a short putt. And Jacob with the easy birdie. Super great tee shot. And we're going to have Chris tap in and this Chris tap in. I think that's the fastest I've ever seen Chris Dickerson just walk up and putt. Yeah, for sure. He doesn't ever take long, but he's usually calculated. All right, moving on to hole 15. This one is pretty tough because you can throw the hyzer up there, which is the preferred play, but there's these two guardian trees uh, kind of moderately laid in the fairway that really catch a lot of shots. As close as a professional disc golfer ever gets to poke and hope, this would be that hole. Yep. You really have to air it out wide and to the right and high and just hope it comes down in a good spot. Yeah, the best way to play this hole is just hit the first gap, and if you do that, you definitely will get a little bit further, and you'll get in jump putting range, so Absolutely. it's not an impossible two. Around the corner is definitely a little bit more forgiving than it looks from the tee pad. And Chris does a really high shot and lands in an amazing spot. And to get past those two trees I was speaking about is That's about par for, for this hole. Yeah. 380-foot <laughs> pure spike hyzer. That's a crush. Jeremy looked like he had a similar line. Yeah. He's yeah, it was very similar, just a little bit uh, more stable. Yeah. Whatever he threw, maybe it just hooked up a little more. And, Chris, you're going to see a lot of knee shots on this hole to get under the ceiling we are talking about. It really pinches up towards the green, or what you would consider the green, where the basket is. It's um, These cedars, man, that's why we call it Cedar Hill. It's just yeah, it's easy big, to get wide branches. Up. Jeremy, gotta make sure to get through his obstructed lie. Probably just laying this one up, not giving it some tort. Yeah, no crazy runs. Yeah, you just really want to play safe right there. Jacob's got a long par save on his hands. Yeah, that's that's tough to to even out that birdie from the last hole with a bogey on hole fifteen. It is disappointing, but I mean, any one of these holes, if you don't hit your line right off the tee. You can have a, a hard time getting to the There basket. we go with Chris correcting on his step putt. That's a great bang. Great two on. Ooh, Chris. Chris. A little disappointing. Maybe didn't see it. Maybe that branch wasn't in his mind, I'm sure. That happened. There, a lot. however, there we go. was another great putt from Chris Hassan. Yep. Seen, seen him light up a little bit more in the back nine. Jacob, actually a little bit of a comebacker for Bogey. Yeah. Good yep. thing he made it. I mean, that's Jacob Henson range. Yep. And Jeremy with a very understandable par. Surprising only to see one par. Yeah, that, that is a little surprising, especially uh, Jacob Henson taking a four on that hole. Yep. Hole 16. And if the last one was a backhand favorable hole, this is a forehand favorable hole. Absolutely. There's lots of early stuff on the right side that can choke up a backhand thrower. Dickerson obviously going with the flick. You want to make it around that tall coney cedar right in the middle of the fairway. And of he course, Dickerson. a better spot, I believe. Dude, the trees love Dickerson. I'm not even <laughs> kidding. Like, he has he's got some major tree karma. Jones, Jones he's going to play smart. Them, yeah, playing take, with a putter. But taking that, you know, slow, straight putter shot yep. up the gut. He does hit the tree. That's, that's a tough. He's probably going to have a forehand. Heiser upshot and just skip it there. Looking pretty good for Jacob. 
defense, and he has power on this shot. Mm. I don't know that I've ever seen anyone go that far well, past. I had a That's, motor on it. Yeah. Chris, another backhand on the card. Surprised to see two of them. Maybe a little bit low on that shot. Yep. He's rolling too, ain't he? Yep. Mm-hmm. But a lot of these guys are still going to be able to get up there for their threes. Looks like Jeremy found the right side gap, which yeah. definitely is in play. But it's, That's usually the way I choose to go if I find myself in front of that big Coney cedar. And Chris, he's just going to loft it up there, puts lots of Anheuser because he knows he's going to throwing it with little speed, so it's going to flex out. Touchy sidearm from Henson. What you can't Back see up. is Jacob actually hit me here. Luckily, it was going slow. Oh, no. Didn't affect the shot, hopefully. But it slid on the ground. I was and... worried about you a few times out there this weekend. <laughs> and Jeremy. Right the Danger zone. Jeremy missing a few putts on the back nine. And wow, that rolled. This is, this is not an easy putt. Yeah, and he sinks it. Um, yeah, that's great. And Jacob, a little bit of a comebacker, but that's easy for him. And Chris, same for him. He's got that all day. Nice, easy cleanup. Moving forward. And hole 17. This has to be one of my favorite holes at Cedar Hill. It's just a big bomber hole, but you do have to get it down the middle. It's not forgiving if you don't throw the yeah, right this shot. Is, I mean, this is pushing 700 feet. I mean, it feels like a lot longer, and it's such a tight fairway, especially around the bend. And that's the line you're going for. Basically, you want to get down to that point, but if you're parked in those trees on the left, you're going to have a hard time getting to the basket. That is the mistake that is very common on this hole, to throw something that looks great, but then have it dump out at the end. Or hit a spotter in the neck. <laughs> but it was great to have spotters out here, looking, seeing the discs. Makes the event very That's professional. That's almost a better drive, just because you have a little bit more room to stand and place your feet. And even with that drive, it is still a tough upshot. Yeah. The hill slopes on the right of the basket, right where the ideal gap is. If you hit that, there's a good chance you could roll or something bad could happen where you don't exactly have an easy putt. See, I always hope to skirt the right side, but it's dangerous, as you just saw on the last drive. And Jeremy's going to be left with about 200 to 250 feet, I would say. Maybe yeah. 250. Good overstable mid-range will get you right into the basket. Yeah. Chris on that right side, but it's not the worst spot. He can still flex a shot down there. Looks like he'll be just in the middle. Yeah, not too bad. Jacob ended up way to the right over by 13's basket. Man, those trees are just so unforgiving right there on that left side. Mmm, Jeremy. Man, he was in prime position for the birdie. And wow, what a putt from Chris. Wow. 65 feet. That was a great putt. Yeah, that was a solid putt. That was amazing. These guys all still cleaning up. And we get another look at Chris's putt. What a long putt. Man, he can he can really he can really smoke those long putts. Seems like he's having a harder time with the twenty and in. Jeremy, oh, off the basket. Man. Looking to match Chris. Jacob on that hill I was talking about. Squeaks it in Holy off the cage. Crap. Wow. Wow, that was most unlikely putt of the day. Yep. <laughs> and it's in. Unexciting power yep. tap in. But that's that's oh, of course it's exciting. Look how well he's playing. Yeah. But now of course they gotta make the long walk back up the road to uh what is this in the tournament? Our last hole eighteen. Hole eighteen. See normally this is hole sixteen. <clears throat> I have to keep saying that so I keep myself on track. Dickerson, 
This is the common Cranking play. Just one throwing out. a low turnover. But actually, the basket is more to the right than you would expect. You really got to get down there. Yeah, and really, I mean, if you can get to the mouth of the semi-cleared area that curves down the hill towards the basket, you're going to have a pretty desirable upshot. That one looks like it's at the mouth, maybe a little wide. And Chris, let's go throw back in. I feel like that's, I feel like a backhand. That's can really looking get really down good there, from Chris. Chris's song. And he's catching that left side that's all too easy to yeah. throw into. Great looking drive, but it's going to be a tough play. Jeremy stepping up real quick. Throws it a little higher than he might have wanted. Turns around a little bit in disappointment. Chris, smart layup. And plays course, the ground. Yeah, yeah, that's where you want to be. Jacob looking to do the same thing. Just this hit is the a ground dangerous putting zone too, man. I mean, Absolutely. Like, this, this slope does not stop. It goes all the way down to the road. And Ooh, Jeremy, yeah. That slope catching him, getting a little bit of a roll. Yeah. And Chris, the closest, but he's in the woods and almost sinks another yeah. long putt. Yeah, I really wanted that for him. Jeremy, a little bit of a three putt. I mean, that is first it's quite was... a roller coaster of a round, Harper. Yeah. I don't know, man. Um... Maybe his putting was just a little off today. Sometimes you're not feeling on it, but he's going to be. And Chris Dickerson just showing off. Yep. Easy par. I mean, I don't think that's something a robot would do. <laughs> All right. So there we go, folks. That's round one at Cedar Hill um, for the Music City Open 2018, sponsored by Dynamic Disc. And you see the scoring separation. It's uh, two scores fairly far under par and two over par. It's... You would really, I mean, you would think that an advantage would go to the guys that have know the course, but it's been nice to be here with you, Harper. Yep. Good seeing you, Mark. <laughs>